after Jets camp, how big of a, I guess, a leg up was that for you after getting to skate with the Jets now being uh, skating with the Manitoba Moose? Um, yeah, no, that was, uh, that was great to be able to come in and, uh, you know, kind of get my feet wet uh, a little bit early, right? Uh, you know, being from Manitoba here, we were, we were locked down pretty hard since uh, mid-November there. So, you know, to be off the ice for, you know, about six to eight weeks there, uh, it was definitely nice to, you know, be able to get a bit of a bit of an advantage, you know, before coming in here for sure. And you were also, of course, able to ink a, a contract for this season with the Moose. Just uh, how excited are you to, I guess, have a place to play and to play for the Manitoba Moose organization this season? Uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, you know, I really couldn't uh, ask for much more, um, you know, after a long off season and uh, not knowing really uh, what was going to happen. Uh, you know, it was great to get an invite to, to go to Jets camp there and then to be able to, you know, make something of the opportunity. I'm very, uh, very happy about that. And, you know, to be here at home in Manitoba, I couldn't be more excited for the opportunity. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Mike Sawatsky. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, Cole. Um, I wonder if you could take you, take us through your last uh, six, eight months. Um, there are a lot of people in, in the ECHL uh, who, who were struggling to find a place to play. And I'm wondering, was that ever an issue for you? Were you ever concerned that you wouldn't have a place to play uh, this winter? Um, you know, it's something I think that goes through your mind for sure. Um, you know, it's a long off season, like you said. Uh, uh, we got laid off last, middle last March, and you know, I'm going into the off season as a free agent. Uh, obviously, didn't go back with LA, so um, there's a lot of uncertainty. But you know, you try and push that out of your mind as much as possible, and you you do what you can off the ice uh, and what you can on the ice. You know, when you have those opportunities. Um, so you know, to get the call on the 24th. Uh, you know, it's definitely, uh, you know, you don't want to say you're surprised, but you're definitely very thankful that that comes your way. And, you know, I was just very happy that uh, I've been staying ready for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, here we are now. And I'm, you know, I'm very fortunate to have a place to play this year. What would you say is different about your game uh, than, uh, say, when you were your last year in, in, in Portland? Um, I think, you know, just maturing uh, with, uh, you know, my work habits, um, you know, being more ready away from the puck, uh, being ready for play, for plays sooner. And, uh, you know, um, communication has become a, a bigger part of the game at the pro level uh, with my defensemen, you know, just uh, communi communicating more, you know, to help them out to try and make things easier. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's good for us going both ways. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Joey Slattery. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Cole. I'm just wondering, growing up, how many games were you able to to see in person, whether it be the Manitoba Moose or Winnipeg Jets? And what were those memories like? Um, you know, I actually, uh, I've gotten to see a lot of hockey here in Manitoba over the years. Uh, you know, uh, started with the Moose. I, you know, remember guys like uh, Johan Hedberg and, uh, and Drew McIntyre there. Uh, even Corey Schneider, I got to see play a little bit for the Moose back then. So... Um, you know, that was always, uh, it was always a big treat to be able to come out to a Moose game. I mean, you know, we didn't have the Jets for, for quite a while there. So that was kind of like uh, our NHL games to get to go to growing up. So that was definitely super special. And then when the Jets did come back, uh, that was actually my last year I was at home. So uh, I was able to catch a few games and uh, there was definitely like just such a big buzz in town. And, um, you know, the atmosphere at MTS there is just unbelievable. So, um, you know, I think it makes this experience definitely a lot cooler um, being able to have had those memories growing up and uh, take a lot of pride to uh, be in part of this organization. And you talked about it a little bit, you know, just because of everything that's happened. And, you know, we were talking about it with Cole, too, with uh, COVID-19 and all the different rule changes that had to come with it. You know, you find yourself in a position playing with your childhood team. And, you know, as you're trying to carve out your own professional career, do you find any added motivation maybe just because you have that understanding of the team and its history and you've seen some players that you grew up you know idolizing make NHL careers of their own yeah I mean uh it's it's a tough situation this year um it's something that you know nobody really saw coming and you know we all hope it gets better very soon obviously so you know we're all doing our part to you know to be preventative and uh you know to do the right things but uh you know we are here like you said and um yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, take a lot of pride in uh, playing for this organization. Um, being at home, it means a lot. And, 
you know, seeing, seeing a lot of the success from players that have come through here in the past and, uh, you know, being a fan of this team growing up, uh, it's definitely, it's very, very special and uh, it's something I don't take for granted and uh, I'm excited for the opportunity. And if I can get one more question and I just want to ask uh, with this opportunity, what do you need to do? So what are your, is your objective here coming into camp and going into the season? What do you aim to achieve this year in order to help you get to that next level? Um, I mean, uh, not a lot changes right now. It's just coming to work every day and try and get better. Um, you know, we still don't have our schedule yet. We don't know what things are going to look like. So, you know, right now it's just a focus of, you know, trying to learn as much as I can from Rick here. And, uh, you know, just uh, just trying to get better each and every day, trying to improve my habits, trying to work harder, um, you know, and also um, earn the trust of the coaches uh, and my teammates as well. Uh, I think that's all I can really do. And, uh, you know, just take it one day at a time right now. Jen, can I ask one more here? Yep, go ahead. Okay, this will be my last one. Uh, just touching on the uh, your time at camp with, uh, with Winnipeg. Uh, you know, obviously the, there's been a... a very good development when it comes to goalies with the moose and you had a chance to share the ice with Connor Hellebuck right after his Vesna season. I'm wondering if you had a chance uh, to talk with him uh, and maybe pick his brain a little bit. And what did you learn sharing the ice uh, with a goalie of that caliber? Um, I mean, anytime, uh, you know, any NHL player, um, it's always special, you know, to be out there because that's, that's something that we're all striving for. And uh, it's an opportunity that not everybody gets. So it's, it's always special. And, you know, um, I didn't get too much time uh, to talk to Connor off the ice uh, here at camp this year, but, you know, I've had the luxury of being able to train with him the last couple summers uh, a little bit. So, um, you know, I know a lot of, a lot about his character and, you know, he's uh, very deserving of, of all the rewards he gets. And, you know, I've, I've seen the work that he puts in and, you know, there's uh, there's always something you can learn from those guys, even if you don't get the chance to get too much in depth in a conversation. I mean, you can just see their habits on and off the ice, uh, you know, they, uh, they really take being a pro to a new level and, uh, you know, he's very deserving of uh, everything he's accomplished. Okay, we'll finish up here with a follow-up from Mike Suwatsky. Go ahead, Mike. Cole, I should have asked this earlier. Um, if the moose gig didn't come up, what were you going to do this year? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if I can 100% answer that for you. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, um, I'm just fortunate uh, that I was able to, you know, um, make something out of the opportunity that they provided to me. And, uh, you know, luckily, I didn't have to look down that road.